This time I had to have a look through this morning's newspapers with the Huffington Post UK's editor-in-chief, Kyla Buzashi, and Sunday Mirror columnist, Jamie Breitz. Good to see you both. And let's kick off, should we, with the uh, independent news we got uh, yesterday, Carla, but more analysis on these 15,000 yeah. job cuts to come over the next couple of years. I know. I mean, it's uh, that's going to affect an awful lot of people, and um, I think there's going to be lots of people seriously worried about their jobs today. But um, I think what's also interesting, I mean, this is the big headline, 15,000 cuts, but HSBC also cutting 700. It doesn't make the headlines in quite the same way, but it's going to still affect a lot of people and people worried today. I mean, do you think this then falls back into the, the idea that... that you know, Lloyd's Banking Group has just become too big. I mean, their boss basically saying that we need to trim down, we need to make yeah. the bank much more efficient and lean. Yeah, but also I think, you know, everything that's been going on over the past few years, people are looking at banks, people who don't work in the banking sector and seeing how it's affecting them. And, uh, and the banks have got to be held account to it. And unfortunately, it's the people who are working there that are suffering from it. Mm, I mean, it's just more pain, isn't it, Joe? Yeah. It's like a huge big kaleidoscope that's been thrown up over the last few years. And it's very pertinent, I thought, as we looking mm. at the paper, seeing that um, it's, it's, a, it's a world of extremes right now with protests and marches, riots, a new one and a half million pound Veyron unveiled today, you know, a car, a one million pound stamp sold last week. Yeah. Somebody found a receipt from a cash till with a hundred million dollars just in a regular high street account yeah. yesterday, don't know who it belongs to. And then we have 15,000 jobs. And I think what hasn't been noted by the press, and it is quite late in the paper, even though they touched on the papers yesterday yeah. on this huge, behemoth of a catastrophe for 15,000 people yeah. on top of 28,000 people yeah. is this which is one of the biggest losses of jobs in not just in banking history but in British history British company history this is monumental I don't know yeah. how it's tucked away so far yeah on page 35 That's all it is, yeah. yeah so uh, not making the front pages which seems uh, and yet, with all of this, there's, there's got to be an element, and it sounds cold, but there's, there's got to be an element, certainly within the current economic climate, surely, Carla, that, that you know, banks, as much as any other business, do need to be making sure they're, they're hitting the bottom line, and yeah. they, they have got to be more agile, to use their boss's words. Yeah, and you're seeing it across every sector. It's not just in banking. People are losing jobs, and everyone's looking to make cuts. And unfortunately, it's the people working on floors who are, who are affected by it. I also noticed elsewhere in the mail that the former boss of this bank, and I nearly, I nearly opened a bank account with Lloyd's two Fridays ago, a new business account, um, is doing effectively nothing according to the paper, and he's being paid £100,000, 100,000 bags of sand, mm. a month, for doing nothing. A month? Yes, mm. a month. There you go. So, I mean, how do you think this ties in, Jamie, with what we're hearing from uh, Ian Duncan Smith, the Work and Pension Secretary today, when he's effectively saying, I mean, to, to simplify it hugely, but he's effectively saying British jobs for British workers. And when we're looking at these levels of, of redundancies, and although unemployment did fall in the last quarter, is that a, I mean, it's a controversial step forward, possibly a bit of a vote winner, but mm. it's a difficult area, isn't it? It is a difficult area, and it's been covered a lot in the papers yesterday and today, and there's different points of view about immigration and jobs. This is something which is, I think, uh, Cameron was supposedly accused yesterday in some of the papers of not standing by some of his election pledges. I think a more diverse society with more people leads to a more understanding, and I, I, I disagree. I think things are okay on that front. Mm. Any yeah, I, that I think that that's uh, I think perhaps confusing the issue as you said that's that's a vote winning line for some people um, and uh, and that's what they're talking about there it's not really about the jobs. Yeah. Okay, let's move on to the Telegraph, Jamie, um, and uh, a yes. bit of a tough day for Nicolas Sarkozy. Yes, if, if I may, the. Um we have uh, something which is a great photo story. Have you got? And there it is. It, it's, it's almost a bit of a sort of John Prescott moment, isn't it? <laughs> it is. And but you didn't punch him back. No. So no, no. Uh, <laughs> I thought he handled it very well because he, he recovered his composure and carried on, mm. went on to greet other people and, and shake their hands as if nothing had happened. Yeah. What a dude. You know, whatever you think of his politics, this is one cool president. <laughs> he, and, and, and if you look at the photos, what, what his mind is doing? Mm. They're looking the other way, I think. You know, and he gets grabbed, and they were, he was going to go for a punch, this guy, who apparently was a, a theatre worker, mm. and he was arrested, yep. and then uh, questioned, and then released. And it could have been a three years in, in stir for doing something like that. Can you imagine if it was 
Obama. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> things like, well, I don't think you'd have got that close, would you have done if yeah, you'd been Obama? Yeah, quite. I mean, it, I mean, looking at the, at, the, at the footage there that we've got, it's, it's only a bit of a grab a in a way. Yeah. But there he is being wrestled to the ground. Yeah. Fairly, I mean, he's apparently uh, trying to grab him over the, the barrier, maybe to discuss oh, his really? uh, policies. I'll tell you what, it, it, is quite, it, it makes you think about it. I always think with, uh, oh, there you go, with, uh, with walkabouts that any political leader or member of a royal family yeah. does, that, that, there's, God, there's always an element of danger, mm. isn't there? No, I know. But in true Sarkozy style, he walked away, you know, the tie's still in, in perfect shape. Yeah, no, well, there you <laughs> go. Well, he does have anywhere. a certain amount of style, whatever, whether you like him or not. Yeah. He says, um, no problem, no problem. Carla, let's talk about bail chaos in the mail. Yeah. Um, obviously, politicians are looking at possibly emergency legislation, trying to work how to work through this, but 25 years of legal history, if you like, have just been swept away and there are now these huge implications as a consequence. But what seems interesting is this, is, this follows on from something that happened in April and it's, it's been very quiet and hasn't really, um, it hasn't been in the headlines, it hasn't affected anything and it's only now coming to light and it's only now that MPs are having to react to it and going to have to react to it very, very quickly. Mm. Or it's going to cost, well as they're saying, it's going to be the taxpayers and end up spending huge amounts of money from all the compensation claims. The amazing thing though is that this could have come to light at any time. It was spotted by perhaps an overzealous legal advisor yes. in court who said, well, hang on a minute, uh, they, they've served this time. Yeah. So it just makes you wonder what other laws mm. could be thrown up into the air at any yes. moment in time. Yeah. The questions are with this, Jamie. I mean, it's going to have, it's going to, have to be resolved one way or the other pretty quickly, but... For sure. It's this whole idea now, when one chief constable yesterday was saying, you know, my officers are running about like headless chickens, because people that don't know how to enforce a law, how quickly any charges need to yeah. be brought, I mean, it does throw the whole system into disarray. There's an urgent need, I and mean, I think the, the mail have probably over the pudding a little bit, but the reality is there is an urgent need for clarification mm. on here. As you said, police officers are literally wondering what to do. Um, in some cases, uh, uh, the, the head of Scotland Yard has said here, interestingly, the ruling not only overturns 25 years of police interpretation application, but I quote, we are very, very concerned. And this is really serious. Mm. Again, it's one of these things, here we are in the mail, it's page 19. Yeah. It, this, it's in any other situation, yeah. surely. Yeah, this should be front page news. In a non-news day. It's not a big newsy day, is it? Let's be honest. No. If it's just Duncan Smith's little in that chat. You know, and we've got major stuff no. going on here. This is... No, no, no. We've got Will and Kate in Canada. Yes, yeah, which is very important. <laughs> well, talking of all things to do with beauty, let's move, Carla, to the third page 31 of the mail. Just in a, a quick hit on them, um, why women uh, feel that ignored from 46 to 60. I, I hate stories like this and I also hate how to stay visible tips which um, well, include things like go and have a bra fitting that's gonna make you feel better. There's nothing there about getting a great new job or going out and finding a new <laughs> hobby or connecting with your friends it's Recognize all about your um, assets if uh, you have a waist define it flirt with your feet put a wiggle in your stride with highest heels it might work it might work <laughs> jamie carla good to see you thank you very much indeed for taking us through the papers let's get a random of all the sport for you right now jackie's down at wimbledon Thanks, Stephen. It is men's semi-finals day today. Andy Murray not dreaming just yet of lifting the Wimbledon title, but he's got Rafa Nadal today in the semi-finals, and he's got a great chance. He's going to have to be at his best, though, because Nadal is the defending champion and the world number one. But Murray looking good so far. He's been in the semi-finals twice before. Will it be third time lucky? England plays Sri Lanka in the second one-day international at Headingley later on. But this morning, the Sri Lankan sports minister has sacked the country's cricket board amid claims of corruption and mismanagement. And at lunchtime today, David Hay and Vladimir Klitschko weigh in for their world heavyweight title fight in Hamburg. Hay says he doesn't want to leave anything to chance in tomorrow's bout and insists he's going to go for the knockout. We'll be live from Hamburg throughout the day here on Sky News and also from here, Wimbledon, SW19. I'll see you later. Great stuff, Jackie. Thank you. Big day then for uh, Andy Murray, of course, Sarah. Absolutely. Is the weather going to hold out for him? It's absolutely going to perform. We are going to have perfect weather for Wimbledon today. Light winds, not just...